and welcome back chapter 18 bob it's great to see you i watched my father greet a friend who used to be in the service with him the man entered our, our house a gift bag in one hand and a bottle of wine in the other how long are you going to be in be in town oh just a few days i've got some appointments on the west coast west coast this friday you didn't have to bring anything, my father said as he patted him on the back. I wanted to. The man turned and looked straight at me in a way that made me want to run to my room and hide. My father seemed oblivious to my reaction and the slimy feeling this guy gave off and was still smiling away. The man handed me the gift bag. I didn't want to take it, but I saw my father's face behind him giving me the look. The Camilla, you're being rude again, Stare. I reached out a hand and took the unwanted gift. I hope you like it. There was something in his eyes, the way he looked at me, that made me freeze up. Say thank you, Camilla, my mother said as she walked in the room. Thank you. I bet you'll turn into quite a little lady when you grow up. I nodded and then took off the first chance I got. I shot up in bed, trying to catch my breath. I lied. I did know bad guy. He had looked exactly the same 25 years ago, and even then, I had known something was off with him. I jumped out of bed and looked around the house quickly. After I was certain I was alone, I powered up the laptop fate always left sitting on the side table. My mother was a big ancestry, so I knew every site to hit complete with passwords. It took me about 15 minutes to find Robert Reynolds. He supposedly died one year after that dinner. My guess was he'd been dead long before then. No wife or children listed. His parents didn't exist. Robert Reynolds never actually existed. I just cleared the history when fate walked in. There was no way I was admitting I knew this guy now not after his reaction to even a hint of recognition. Hope you don't mind, I borrowed your computer. That's fine, he said as he moved around the kitchen. What happened to the karma before me? I saw his movements falter for a hair of a second before he continued taking things out of the fridge. You want some French toast? Sure. I stood up and walked over to the breakfast bar that faced the kitchen, waiting for him to talk on his own. I had a feeling this was a touchy subject and I didn't want to press. Fate wasn't the type you could push into a response anyway. He was either going to tell me on his own terms or not at all. A month before she died, she came to me and told me about a man she'd seen. She said she thought he was like us, from that day on, she had become obsessed with him. What did she tell you? Nothing but a description of what he looked like, which was exactly like bad guy. He placed a plate in front of me, but I noticed he didn't make himself one. The day she died, she called me and said she spotted him again. I asked her to wait for me to get there, but she said she had to follow him or she'd lose him again. And then what happened? She disappeared. Harold said she retired, but it's a lie. She's dead. How can you be so sure? I forced down a bite, but had lost my appetite as well. She wasn't due to for retirement, and Harold knew that as well as I. She wouldn't have left without saying goodbye. What about the rest of the office? No one else is suspicious? I haven't spoken to them about it. He leaned on the opposite counter, his arms crossed in front of, front of his chest. Why not? I don't want them involved. I'm involved. You have to be. You're also leaving. They aren't. It's better for them to stay out of it. I pushed the plate away after I forced down enough to not be rude. So he must have known she was searching for him. Whoever he is, he knows about us. He certainly knows about me, which means he's somehow like us, he said, finishing my thought. But I'm fairly certain he wasn't ever with us. Why? 
because I've been around a long time. He walked out into the living room area and I swiveled on my stool to follow him around the room. Is there any way for this transition to happen accidentally? Uh, it never happened before, but I couldn't rule it out. He paused for a moment. I've got a job, he said, and left. With no other current leads, I decided to do a little office re recon... Mm. Yeah, they be using some big words. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably be at work anyway, demonstrating my active participation. An hour later, I was looking up at the black felt board that listed all the inhibits, inhibitants in their office suites. Then my eyes lit on custom toys. He was real? I'm coming, Santa. I did a little hop in place before I caught myself. It wasn't even a question of where I was going first, straight to the big guy himself, Santa. I wonder if he had a North Pole. If he did, maybe I can visit it before I left. I took the stairs two at a time to the third floor, unit 307. I wonder if he has some reindeers hidden somewhere, maybe the roof? I swung the door open, expecting candy canes and big boxes with bows, maybe some milk and cookies. I was a little disappointed that it looked the same as our reception area. I was hoping it would appear a bit more, um, I don't know, magical toy land. With no one behind the desk, I went over to the door that would lead to the back offices and hopefully candy cane lane and wrapped quickly. All the fun was probably back there. Coming, said a high-pitched voice. The door opened a minute later to what could only be described as an elf. The inner child in me was screaming, Yes, yes, this is what I was hoping for. You're the transfer, he asked. His voice was high, but with a strange raspy quality, like he altered between sucking on helium and an unfiltered cigarette. Is your boss in? No, he's on spring break. You know, it's our off season. Even the big guy needs to get some rays in. He's down in Cancun right now. Okay, well, I just wanted to drop by and say hello. I tried to look past him, but all the lights were out and the blinds must have been, drunk, been down. Come back next month. But I won't be here. He shut the door in my face. I wasn't going to get to meet Santa. That just sucked. I walked from the office more disappointed than an adult woman right adult woman might want to admit and headed towards my next stop. Dr. Bright, the tooth fairy. It felt a little like the lame consolation prize. I was trying to remember which suite he was in when it hit. I leaned against the wall in the hallway trying to catch my breath. It had come on so strong and suddenly it had taken me aback. A vision of a woman lacing her elderly father's tea with cyanide hit me like a center block across the forehead. They lived in a small house in the suburbs right outside of Dallas, Texas. The clock on their kitchen wall struck 12 as they were about to sit down for lunch. It would be the final lethal dose but it wasn't his time to go. The tooth fairy would have to wait. I ran down to the parking lot, the closest place that would be large enough. I reached into my pocket and dialed up a door. In spite of any animosity they might harbor for me, the guards appeared quickly right there in the middle of the pavement. The door showed to what little of it there was. It only opened about 10 inches wide. Oh, come on, guys. I have to squeeze through that thing? The only response I received was the right guard raising a glove hand. He pointed toward a different ding I hadn't seen on his armor chest plate. Okay, I get it. Still paying me back. I deserve it. I ruined your suit, your stuff. I squeezed through the small spot, trying to mask my struggles. I understand. I dinged your suit. We started off on the wrong foot, but I'm really not a bad sort. 13 more days. 
I just need to say, I'm very, I'm a very nice person once you get to know me. I continue to speak as I pulled my leg through the last little bit. Instead of any reply, they slammed the door. If I were to hang around for a while, you would grow to love me. I yelled at where the door had just been. I've been left in the middle of a playground a few blocks away from where I knew my job would be. A dirt bike that had been that had seen better days, hell, maybe even better decades, was lying in the dirt in front of me. I guess I was biking the rest of the way. I yanked the handle free out of the sucky mud that didn't particularly want to let go. Wasn't there a drought right now? Yeah, here I was, smack in the only mud pal within sight. I looked around and saw some kids playing baseball further away on the playground. They were completely unaware of me, even as I had to duck to avoid getting hit by their ball. I didn't think that had gone unnoticed by the guards either. They probably wanted me to get pegged in the head. I hopped on my soul aptly named dirt bike and started pedaling away. The house was right where I thought. It was a yellow ranch with dingy white crooked shutters. It had an overgrown lawn, more weeds than grass. I rode around to the side and leaned my bike up against the house. It was 10 to 12 as I approached the side door. The older man sat at the table while a younger woman who I knew was his daughter and soon to be murderer moved about the kitchen. I stood there for a moment, looking in the screen door, making sure they wouldn't notice me. When she walked toward where I stood and looked outside right past me, I knew I was in the clear. It was such an odd thing being right there, but invisible to her. She stepped away, her worn flip-flops slapping the the callous hills as she walked back to where the man sat at the table. I opened the door and walked in. My hands were shaking slightly as I shut the door. The woman was quite large and I wasn't sure how, I fare, how I'd fare in a fight. Track marks ran up and down her arms and I knew drug addicts could often be quite tough. I defended quite a few in court, but as their attorney, they had motivation to play nice. Now, Dad, I'm going to take this and cash it so I can buy things for the house. She pushed a, pushed a greasy strand of hair behind her ears and wondered when she showered. And I wondered when she showered last. She looked at the check in her hand as she stood next to him by the table. I walked over to where her purse sat on the counter and was about to rifle through it for a cyanide for the cyanide when he spoke. Hello. I swung around to see the older man staring directly at me. You can see me? I was ready to grab a knife to protect myself from the attack surely to come from the daughter, but she looked right past me when she glanced around the room. Who are you talking to? She asked him. Her, he said and pointed to me. You've completely lost it. You're lucky I don't stick you in a home. The daughter went back to rifling through a pile of mail on the table. I shook my head. She can't put you in a home. I said to the man, she wants your social security check. How come you can see me? He shrugged. The daughter stashed a check in her pocket as she opened another piece of mail that probably wasn't hers and walked in the other room. Are you here for me? He asked. I knew exactly what he meant. No. For her, not the way you think. I'm not killing anyone. Killing anyone. I'm not death. Not today, anyway. I dug into her purse and found the cyanide. Goodbye, I said. I left the house, but I knew my job wasn't done. I went to her car, parked in the driveway. The doors were open, and I lifted up the passenger seat mat. A small packet of off-white powder was there. I took it and placed it on the back dashboard. I walked over to the back of her car and gave it a little tap before I hopped back on my bike and rolled to the playground. For reason I've never been able to explain to any sane human being, I knew after she left there she would get pulled over 
a little less than a mile away for a bad brake light. Upon the officers approaching the vehicle, he would spot the bag of heroin there, heroin through the back windshield. Between her probation being violated and possession of illegal substances, she would be incarcerated and spend the next three years in jail. The entire time, she'd be wondering how the bag got there when she thought she stashed it under the rug. I didn't know what would happen to the man, but I hope he'd, he'd find peace. And that's the end of chapter 18. Stay tuned for the next chapter. Thank you.